Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining. I'm Dean Andrews, Head of Developer Relations at Inner Systems, and uh, very excited to have you here today. The reason for us gathering is to kick off our Grand Prix Developer Contest. It is our biggest uh, contest of the year. Uh, we want to thank you for continuing support the, to support the inner systems developer community and to build and innovate on our platform. We're very glad for this opportunity to reward you for doing so. The agenda for today is that I am going to step through the details of the contest. I'll show you some of the screens related to that. Then we're gonna have uh, some of our esteemed colleagues uh, comment. They're gonna be providing some tips, some suggestions on uh, things to focus on and ways to get started, and also uh, kind of a big picture of how we got here in the history of the developer community. All right, any questions about the agenda? We'll leave time for questions uh, at the end as well. All right, let me share my screen. So here is the announcement that's on the developer community. Uh, again, this is our uh, second annual version of the Grand Prix contest. We did this back in 2021 as well. It is the biggest uh, a prize of the year, $22,000 total. The objective is to build open source solutions using our Inner Systems IRIS data platform. If you are new to uh, our community and this contest, please create a developer community account at this link. That's uh, the contest is for members of the developer community. It's free to join. And uh, this is how you get started there. This contest will run from May 9th to May 29th, uh, almost the whole month of May, Then, the, so three weeks of time. And then there is the voting period, which I'll describe in a minute from May 30th to June 5th. You do have the opportunity to continue to uh, make slight updates to your work in this voting period, but the voting will begin on May 30th, okay? So the objective is to find the best application that uses inner systems IRIS. And in, in the Grand Prix contest, unlike our kind of regular monthly contest is open to any topic area using our technology and IRIS. Uh, so, you can present any application using IRIS as a backend, API or database, with any type of inner systems IRIS API or data model. Again, as a reminder, you're going to be submitting an open source application on our open exchange, and I'll describe that in a minute. And uh, you are, so you can create a brand new application, and we welcome that. Or if you have submitted applications before, you're welcome to take something you've done before and improve it, add on to it, and submit it uh, as an application. We are, if, if you do do that, as you'll see here, we're looking for significant improvement if you are using an existing application that you've built. And the application should work on either Iris Community Edition or Iris for Health Community Edition or Iris Advanced Analytic Community Edition. And you can use these links in the announcement to find out more information about those. The application should be open sourced and published on GitHub. And you should have a readme in English that contains all the installation steps and contain either a video demo or a description of how the application works. So each uh, developer can submit a maximum of three submissions. We do allow teams of developers to work together 
And Alex Woodhead, a technical specialist, is going to be actually describing a little about this and how you can work as a team. If you do work as a team, when you submit, it will be submitted by one developer. That's just how our uh, infrastructure works. But in your uh, README, please identify all of the developers in your team that worked on the project. So the contest prizes, there'll be two uh, uh, sets of judges. There are intersystems uh, employee experts, some of whom are on this call now that will be uh, doing the expert judging. These are the prize entries for that uh, channel, that track of the contest. And then developer community members can vote for the community track. And these are the prizes listed there. When applications are submitted in open exchange, you'll see on the upper right, the page for these uh, applications, that's where the voting happens. There'll, there'll be an expert tab and there'll be a community tab. And that's how you uh, vote there. We do have, as a reminder, we have a global masters group. Here's the uh, homepage for that of very active members. We encourage people to join global masters and uh, all winners will receive global masters badges as well. All right. And if several participants score the same amount, they are all considered win winners and the prize money will be shared among those winners if that does occur. All right, these are the important deadlines again. Today, the contest begins, hence the webinar you're seeing now. And the deadline again for submission is May 29th. And these again, just a reminder are the voting periods. And again, you can improve your app uh, through the registration and the voting period as well. And who can participate? It is really anyone can participate. Uh, you know, if you're a member of the developer community, you can participate. If you're brand new to inner systems technology and our community, we welcome your participation. We do exclude intersystems employees. That wouldn't be fair. So the, the, they're the only group that cannot participate. Inner systems contractors are allowed to participate. Okay. And here are some helpful resources. If you're new to inner systems, again, these are ways you can get started learning about our technology. Here is information on our package manager. Here's how to submit the application in open exchange and, uh, and uh, to apply for the contest. These are some examples to get you started. And uh, if you need help, we have a Discord channel that you can uh, ask questions on as well. Any questions at this point? All right, I'm going to jump to another page. We have technical bonuses uh, as we did last year for the Grand Prix contest. I'm going to just cover them briefly. You can certainly ask questions and I believe uh, uh, some of my colleagues will discuss some of this topic information in, in their presentations, but the, these are a list right here and the points that you get for including these elements of our technology into your platform. This is available on the developer community page. Uh, just search for the contest uh, 2022 technical bonuses. And below this list is actual information describing in more detail what each of these technology elements are with links and helpful resources to get you started. So the first one is Inner Systems Fire as a Service and Iris for Health. And here's more additional information on that. 
Here's our integrated ML, and here's a template and import tools and documentation, even online courses and video. Here's interoperability productions with business process language, and you can learn more about that here. Uh, product extension usage for uh, Python, Java, or .NET, and here's information about that. Embedded Python, here's how to get started there. Adaptive Analytics, Tableau and Power BI, Inner Systems Iris BI, here's some samples. Docker usage using the ZPM pass package manager. If you create an online demo of your project, you get additional points. And here's a video on how to do that. If you include unit testing, you get additional points. If you publish an article on the developer community, and then you have the opportunity to gain even more points if you publish a second article. If the code passes with zero bugs, you get points. And if you post a video on YouTube that demonstrates your product, you also get additional points. All right. This is just a reminder, again, for if you're new, this is open exchange. This is where you submit the application. You'll find information here on documentation and uh, about the uh, about open exchange and so forth. And then finally, if you oh, if you go here and you click on contest, you'll see. This is this contest on Open Exchange and how to register, which is right over here. Makes sense. Any questions at this point? All right. I am going to pass it over first to Alex Woodhead. He is a technical specialist in inner systems. And he's going to talk a little about teams and some suggestions for approach. Pass it over to you, Alex. Okay. Um, I hope I'm not heading this too generally. Um, so my, my thoughts on, on this competition was, um, firstly, thanks for everybody's enthusiasm to, to come and participate in this competition. And um, I wanted to offer some tools um, which might make this more of a, of a level playing field. Um, so I know there's some really creative people out there and um, competing against perhaps people who are just simply more organized. And I was thinking, how can we make this more of a, a level playing field? Um, so for, for myself, um, for doing open source, I would try and put aside 30 minutes every morning. Um, and this can escalate up to an hour if I hit a productivity zone uh, to achieve this. I set expectations with my family about the time I put aside. Um, my suggestion is you plan dedicated time for this competition implementation. Be organized. Uh, don't expect this will just somehow happen around normal life. So if you can be deliberate with your time, um, think about where you can find time to participate. Um, so it might be giving up social media for three weeks is an easy win. Um, it will help with your concentration anyway. Um, there are so an approach for boxing your creative sessions um, with a fresh and fun mindset. And the idea is to separate work time from your open source. There's studies about using a lamp that you only have switched on on your desk when you when you're doing your open source. I'm from the UK. So my my psychology trick is I have two mugs. One is my work mug. One is my open source mug. And I'm only doing you know, I'm only doing one zone or the other, and I find it just a, an easy switch for, for, for me to get into the mode. Um, leverage your time of day. So for, for myself, mornings, I can crank code out. It, it's, it's a really good time for that. My evenings, I can research. Um, it's easy to um, set up a, a conference call on a team um, to sort of troubleshoot things. Um, so being aware about naturally what your strong strengths are uh, at the time of day can, can help you um, give you an advantage. Um, 
at the end of each day, I suggest you plan what tasks on, on your project are for the next day. You shouldn't be finding yourself starting a session saying, what do I do now? What was I doing? Uh, you want to identify your list and list your block of problems as you go. For this, for this competition, I'd suggest don't just jump into the first idea that you might have. Um, it might be the one that you go with, but um, before you do, explore what's available. Um, bounce your ideas off friends and colleagues, and, and remember to check in how well your idea meets all of the competition criteria. Um, as, as my colleague mentioned earlier, suggest, suggest um, whether you can think about joining a team to amplify your effort. You may find that you have some specialist domain knowledge, which is really cool for, for an idea that you want to do. And you could find someone who doesn't have your experience, but they may have certain experience in Iris. And together, you can, in the time that you've got, come up with a, with a really compelling solution. Um, and you can both learn off each other. So that there'll be some synergies for, for teamworks that um, you might want to investigate the possibilities there. Um, so as, as mentioned earlier, there's some easy point wins like documentation and getting a video of a working application. So if you set, up a, set aside a little bit of time at the end towards the competition and, and to sort of just include, include these, the, um, the documentation doesn't need to be an essay. It just needs to be something that's there. And then there you go, you've got your points. So that's one way of approaching this. Um, how, do you, how do you keep um, making progress on this over the next two, three weeks. Um, so I have a, an example, my brother, he plays the saxophone and a few years ago, he got really good. And it was just, how did you, what happened? And um, he explained he was, he was in a shop, music shop, and he was talking to a professional musician. And this guy said, if you want to get better, all you need to do is buy uh, a music stand for your instrument. And the idea is every time you walk past, um, you don't need to get out of the box, set it up, get ready to play. It's already there on the stand. So you can just see it, pick it up, play it, and it's easy. So what you're doing there is you're removing barriers to getting into to, um, progress on, on your project. And it's a bit personal. It might be just clearing desk space, might be having a second laptop ready to go, removing distractions. But it's worth considering um, how you can lower those barriers to doing things. Um, Finally, I wanted to say that the competition is a great opportunity for personal growth. Um, there, are, there is a, a chicken and egg paradox of how do you get experience? If you can't, you know, do you want to get the job change, but you can't get the experience until you get there? Um, so this competition is a way of kind of extending and growing and, 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 and learning some new skills um, that will, will open up some new opportunities for you. Um, you can visualize your success. Um, my favorite example of this is Mary Reynolds uh, of the um, Chelsea Flower Show winner of 2002. And she'd never competed in, in a flower show before. And their first project task was they wrote their victory speech. So that, that, that was their focus. Um, so you can think of setting some personal goals um, in addition to the ones that are in the competition. And that might help sustain your motivation through the next sort of two, three weeks. Um, and, you know, athletes, they achieve personal bests in competitions that might not be the medal, but they're, they're really achieving something for themselves. Um, so thank you. And, and I hope these uh, thoughts and ideas have been useful for you. Thank you, Alex. I love the uh, victory speech idea. I'm going to use that uh, at some point in the future as well. All right, uh, thank you for that info. Let me pass it off to Bob Kuzeski, product manager here at Inner Systems. He's gonna give you some suggestions on uh, possible uh, technical topic areas and uh, some information about tools. Uh, yeah, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, so I want to talk about some of the tools that are in the IRS toolbox. For those of you who are, who are not familiar with the platform already, you know, IRS is a complete full stack data platform. And that eliminates the need for, you know, a number of integrating a number of technologies. You'll end up with less code. You, you'll use system, uh, lower system resources. You'll get a higher ROI. So, so what do I mean by that? 
you know, at its heart, Iris is a fast, highly scalable database. So in your toolbox to build your application, we have all of the tools that you would expect to work with a fast, highly scalable database. We have ODBC drivers, JDBC drivers. We have more specialized client applications like um, what we call the native API that allows you to have direct access to the underlying uh, data structures that are underneath your, um, your relational data, data structures that you might be accustomed to. Speaking of data structures, the IRS database is a multi-model database. So you could have the same data available as both a relational SQL type of, of, of API, but you could also make that same data available in an object-oriented API. So you could just have uh, store an object and it, it gets stored into the database. Um, we also have some uh, document database functionality. And again, we, we can look at that lower level uh, data structure that we call globals underneath. Um, what else is there that we want to talk about in, in the database application, in, in the database itself? Well, we want to talk about uh, a number of the analytics capabilities that we have. So. Um, Iris includes what we call integrated ML, which is a um, machine learning uh, system that's built into SQL. So you could just say, hey, SQL, train my model, and it will go off and it will train your model for you. Uh, makes it a lot easier to use and to, and to get started with, uh, with machine learning. Uh, we also have integrations with uh, reports for logic reports. We have integrations with Tableau, Power BI, all of those sorts of things that allow you to do analytics and visualizations for um, you know, large scale data. We also have available an application framework that's built into Iris, and that allows you to build applications that run directly in the database. And you can write those, it's an object-oriented language, you could write those in either Python or you could write them in a language we call object script. Uh, and these classes can define your SQL schema, your REST APIs. It's, it's really, it's a very cool, very interesting framework if you haven't had the opportunity to use that before. Built on top of that inside of Iris, we have an interoperability framework that allows you to have uh, easy connectivity with a wide variety of external systems. Uh, it's extendable. You could build your own further extensions of, of uh, uh, you know, if there's a system that you need to connect to that it doesn't already connect to, you can build those really quite easily uh, using the what we call the PEX framework that's available for Java, .NET, Python. Um, uh, let's see, what else did we want to cover? Oh, Iris for Health. Iris for Health is our version of the flagship Iris product that's designed for the healthcare community. So it comes with a fire server built into it as a number of other healthcare specific protocols built in. So these are all the, the, the things that we have, the, the tools that you have in your toolbox that you could use to, to build your applications, to think about them. Uh, that was all really that I had prepared for today. So have fun. Build your applications. Uh, let us know how it goes, and um, you know I'm excited to see what you build. Thank you, Bob. That was excellent uh, kind of overview of the technology. Appreciate that. Let me now pass it on to Jeff Reed. Jeff is director of product management here at InterSystems, and he's going to just give the big picture of our developer community and a little history on the Grand Prix contest itself. Over to you, Jeff. Thanks. I just wanted to say a couple of words uh, to help kick off the biggest contest of the year. First, if you uh, don't know me, I'm, I'm the guy behind the scenes on a lot of things. So you can blame me for most things, Iris. If you haven't met me and would like to just reach out. And 
I know that having the largest cash prizes is exciting to people, but that's not the only reason that you guys tell us that you participate in these contests. We've heard from a lot of people that cash is great, that it's a lot of fun and a lot of connections and the stuff that Alex talked about, about working in teams really contributes to that. And that you like making a difference and contributing overall. And I wanted to talk about that because if you ever have any doubts, what you guys as members of the community have done in these contests to contribute to the community is amazing. We started these contests back uh, in March of 2020. And part of this was the popularity of the advent of code that we started doing a, in December, joining into a, a, a global contest in all languages. Uh, and I guess we started doing the advent of code in 2017. Uh, and over time, you know, when you first started, maybe there were six or seven people participating. Evgeny, uh, as, as the master behind all of these things, got more and more excited as we went and got more and more people. And I see in the attendees today, uh, quite a number of past contest winners. And most of you are probably seeing this recorded. So if you're not a winner, there's a lot of hope to become one. Just keep participating. After the first year, we did a poll of the developer community about why don't people contribute more? And the, the, the top answer was, I don't have time. We got a you know, full-time job and full-time family and contests are, are uh, just don't have that much time. It looks like a lot of work. And the number two thing was, um, hey, you guys are always doing contests about the latest and greatest thing in Iris. You're asking us to exercise it and give you feedback. And yes, we are. But too many constraints. I'd love something where I can use skills I have. I can use any idea I have. And that's what caused us to start the Grand Prix. Uh, it was very well received last year. And I can't wait to see what you guys build this year. So what you've done is has helped inner systems. We've listened to your feedback about the product and hopefully you recognize that we've done things about that. But more importantly, you've helped each other. And Open Exchange, which we started back in October of 2018, now has 615 applications. Um, about 80 of those come directly from these contests and you'll recognize that we build up more and more and more every contest. And as a developer on Iris, the number of downloads is quite, uh, that I see leads me to believe that people are really making use of them. So thank you for your time. I hope this is a lot of fun. I hope you win lots of money. And if you're ever in doubt, your participation and your entries in these contests make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Great uh, background. And I echo Jeff's uh, comments about the, the value of what you produce. I've uh, come in fairly recently to Inner Systems and I have been amazed by the contests, the results of the contest the applications that you all submit on open exchange and the benefit to inner systems and the community at large of all your work. So thank you again. Are there any questions from the participants on the webinar? Let me just check the chat. Looks to me like Robert is itching to start coding. Yeah. 
All right. I think that's good. Again, you can certainly uh, ask questions along the way uh, in Discord as well as on the community itself. Thank you all for joining this webinar. Best of luck in the contest and definitely have fun as you go. Thank you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye, everybody.